Hey YouTube, this is DBG33K, and today I'm going to show you a little walkthrough on how to add an audio track to an already existing DVD. Um, the great part about this is that the DVD will be completely intact. You'll have all of your menus, all of your special features that are on the disc, uh, and you won't have to re-encode re anything. First of all, to be able to do this, you'll need a number of programs. Uh, one, you'll need the PGC DMUX. You'll need Muxman. You'll also need VOB Blanker and PGC Edit. Uh, I'll be sure to have a copy of, or I guess I'll have links to these programs in the description below. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do all of that. Now, um, something else that you'll need, you're gonna need to have the original DVD, um, the one that you're hoping to keep all of the menus and stuff for. I have mine over here. You can have uh, you know the audio TS and video TS file folders set up this way or if you have it in a .iso you can do that too and simply mount the ISO and as long as you have access to these files uh, you'll be able to do the trick so you'll need the DVD that you want to retain all the menus from and then you'll also need the other DVD that has the new audio track so basically the same thing as far as you can either have the ISO or the uh, folders with the files inside them. So uh, let's get started. Alright, so basically the first thing that we're going to do uh, for the first part of, of this whole trick is that we need to take the files that are already inside of the original DVD and we're going to be needing to add the audio stream to the uh, to the right files. Now the way you do that is you have to uh, load the .ifo into a program and that program is the PGC DMUX. So where'd that go? Let's see. Okay, into PGC DMUX. So we'll open that on up. Here's the IFO input and there that is. So basically what we do now is we will tell it which file to take all the information from and that's usually going to be the biggest one it shows right here 52 minutes and one second that's the movie itself and we want it to be able to give us the video stream audio streams uh, sub pick those are the subtitles if you have any on there we do need it to create the cell times.txt and a log file is always good to have too so for our output file on this I believe do we have a folder for it yet we don't have a folder for it Go ahead and now put that to DVD. And process that. Usually nice and quick. So we can see that as that's going, it's already cut out the single audio file that's in there, the audio track. That's the uh, Japanese audio track there the subtitles I have for it, and the video file itself. Okay, that is finished. So that's that aspect. Then the next thing we need to do is open up the IFO of the DVD that has the audio track that we want, the additional audio track that we're looking for. Oop, not in DVD. Um, DVD with audio. This one right here. Okay, now this one's a little bit different because it's an older disk and it wasn't um, authored quite as easily but the, the file that we're looking for is 50 minutes and 52 seconds and we don't need the video stream since the video stream we want is of the original DVD we just need the audio so we also don't need the subtitles uh, we do need the cell times I don't think I mentioned earlier cell times is what the um, is the chapter breaks is how the chapter breaks are set up so I guess we don't actually need that for this one, but we do need to make sure you keep that for the for the first one. Okay, then go ahead and process that. Uh, we don't want it in the same place as DVD because it will overwrite. So we'll go ahead and throw that into DVD2. Okay. 
So we have that now in DVD2. You can see that we have the two audio tracks that were already on that disc. They had uh, the English audio track, which is what we're trying to get, and the Japanese, which we already have from the other one. So I went ahead and deleted that. Um, so we now have all of the individual pieces. Now we need to put those together back into something that looks like this that's going to make the whole disc. Um, and that is going to require the Muxman program. So. Muxman. All right, so this is for call it segment one. Doesn't have to be called segment one. You can rename it if you want. It doesn't really make a difference. So first of all, you take the video, which remember we took from the original DVD that has all the original menus and everything. Oh jeez. Um, desktop that into a DVD. So there it is. Don't really need to do anything with that. It'll figure out what um, aspect ratio and all that kind of stuff. Then for audio stream one, we're going to have whatever the original audio stream was. So for us, that was the one that was in the DVD folder. That's stream one. And for this case, that was the original Japanese audio. And then we go up to add a second stream. That'll be a second audio track, and that's in our DVD 2, which is uh, our additional audio track. Okay, audio file right there. And that one is the version that is in English. Oops. In English, and then we want to add in, if you have any subtitles, or if you wanted to keep your subtitles, go ahead and find where that was set yep, in DVD, subtitles. And those subtitles are also in English. And then in order to maintain the chapter segments, go into File, Import Charter, or sorry, Import Chapter, CellTimes.txt. You can see that there are five different scenes. And then we hit Start. Um, let's see, no, it's not where it's going to go. Yes, it's going to go into New Lord's Lug, because Lord's Lug is the movie that I'm doing this with. Oopsies, and that undid it. New Lord's Luck. Start. Yep, and it creates a new video underscore TS file. So basically, this is creating or recreating a .ifo and all of the VOB files uh, that instead of on the original disc, those files included the video and the Japanese audio and English subtitles, and that was it. This is basically putting those back together, but also throwing in the new audio file. So that should be in New Lord's Lug, video underscore TS, and that is that uh, for this part of it. The next part, um, where did we, we keep on losing, there it is, okay. So the next program we're gonna use is VOB Blanker. We'll open this up, and this is going to, um, let's see, so we're gonna look at the original IFO, again, this is from the original DVD, original DVD and this is going to make sure that we do maintain all of the menus because because what we've done up so far is take all of the pieces of the specific movie that we're looking at and not anything to do with the menu so that's why we do need to make sure that you have this folder that does still have all of the original um, aspects of the DVD so in there go to the .ifo and it's going to show all the pieces that are in that uh, that are in the DVD itself. So over here you can see it's a little intro to the movie. The actual movie part is right here. There's the movie and what we need to do is replace this because this is what was originally in the DVD, in the original DVD. We need to replace that with the new thing that we made using Muxman. So we threw that into new Lord Slug. So we open that up and there that is. It's giving us this warning now. Don't need to worry about this just yet. There is something extra step that we need to do to take care of this, but we'll take care of that when we get to it. So there's that. 
and our output folder is going to be new DVD with both audios uh, and all menus. Okay, so there is that. It's already set to replace. I believe that is it. Go ahead and process that. And now this next step is an extremely important step. Um, if you miss this next step or using this next program, if you miss using this next program, once you get this burned onto a DVD, you're not going to see any change. You won't see the additional audio track and you'll just get frustrated. That's how it was for me. So, um, so I'll go ahead and show you what we need to do next. That next program that we need um, oops, next program that we need is the PGC edit. So we'll wait for this to finish its little game. Okay, it has finished it looks like. So PGC edit. Okay, gotta wait 15 seconds for that. Basically what this program is going to do, it's going to tell the IFO that something has changed. It's going to tell the IFO, because the IFO is what already says that there's one audio track, one sub pals track, one video track. It's basically going to inform it that things have changed and we're adding a second, or that there is an additional audio track uh, to look out for. And that way when it gets put onto a DVD, whatever system you're using it in will also recognize that there is an additional audio track to draw from. So open the DVD folder, that's the one that we just made uh, that includes both audio tracks. So that would be new DVD with both audio tracks and menus. Open that, it's gonna find all of it. And you can see the 52 minutes, this is the title that we added our stuff in. So what you're gonna need to do is double click on that. Here it shows the audio streams, it only shows the first stream. Now this is the Japanese audio stream that was already included in the uh, original VOB in, on that original disc. You can see there Japanese um, AC3. But what we need to do is let it know that there's also an audio stream in the second track there. Or in this case it says one, but it's the second one. So click on one, go ahead and set it, show it that there is in fact an audio there, an audio track there. Set that, so that's saying there is one there. That's not all though, so when you're done with that, hit OK, and you need to go to this green um, film reel. Click on that, it basically looks through it and it sees that you've made that change, and it asks you if you want to fix the number of audio streams and set it to two instead of one, which is exactly what we need to do. So click yes. Um, here you can uh, put in some additional information. For us, that's gonna be English, for EN for English. Um, unspecified, I'm gonna set that to normal and correct it saying that it is two channels, not just a single channel source. Um, it doesn't really make a difference, but it's nice to have the right information um, inside of there. So hit OK. And then we're going to want to save. So file, save DVD. And there you have it. It has saved that. And we should be able to look at the new DVD and see that all the information is there. 6.33 gigs is about right. Um, it's going to end up being a bit smaller than the original. No, it's not. It's going to be a little bit larger. Obviously, it's going to be larger than the original uh, because we've added the extra audio format or audio track. So that is now all the files that you need. Again, those are ready to be burnt to a disc. So hopefully this video has helped you. I know it helped. it's going to help. It's not going to help me because I figured it out last night, but I stayed up a lot of hours figuring this out. And boy, if there was a video out there that could have laid it all out for me, I would have gotten it done a lot faster. So hopefully this will help you and help keep you from having to scour the internet for, uh, for, for forums and threads that are four plus years old that you couldn't talk to people on um, trying to find help. So hopefully this has helped you, YouTube. Uh, if you've liked the video, please like. If you didn't like it, please comment or send me a message. Tell me what I can do better. Um, if you want, please check out all my other videos. I love seeing people, uh, seeing views on there. Uh, if you like my content, please subscribe. Uh, we'll talk to you later, YouTube. Thanks for watching.